three more examples. The first, and, and the three are related to each other. The first is to try and figure out the height that a football goes uh, after a kicker kicks it. So a place kicker kicks a football at an angle of 40 degrees, and the initial speed of the ball is 22 meters per second. Ignoring air resistance to determine the maximum height that the ball attains. So following the steps that we've outlined, we have four possible equations, and we need to define a coordinate system, which we've already got here. There's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. We need to define initial and final events. So let's say that the initial event is the instant after the football is kicked. And the final event is when the ball reaches its maximum height. And so what we want to do is to find what that maximum height is given an initial speed of 22 meters per second. So this V naught here is 22 meters per second. This angle here is 40 degrees. All right, we know something about that final event and that's one uh, key for solving this problem. When the ball reaches its maximum height, its velocity is going completely horizontal. Meaning that the vertical component of that velocity is zero. So that suggests that we start with the y equation, v naught y plus a y times t. Let's try plugging in the information that we have. v y is the final velocity in the y direction. We just determined that that is zero because the ball is going only in the x direction or in the horizontal direction. v naught y is this component of the initial velocity And if the hypotenuse here is 22 meters per second and the angle is 40 degrees, this side of the triangle, the V0Y side of the triangle, is the side opposite the angle theta. So that will be uh, V0Y, I'm running out of room here, is 22 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees. All right, so we can now use that here, 22 meters per second times sine of 40 degrees. Plus, now we need the AY here. And that's the acceleration in the Y direction. Well, that's what this uh, whole chapter is all about. The, as the ball is in the air, its acceleration is down, and it's equal to the gravitational acceleration. And so the y component of that acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Because this acceleration right here is opposite to the direction of the y-axis, which is pointing up, the acceleration is pointing down, that's why it should be negative. And we've talked about that already. So we can now put in that negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration, and then the time we don't know. But amazingly enough, we can solve this equation for the time by by taking this term 
and move it over to the left-hand side of the equation, and then dividing both sides of the equation by 9.8. So what we end up with is 22 meters per second, sine 40 degrees, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Plugging that into my calculator gives 22 sine of 40 divided by 9.8 is 1.44 seconds. Let's check the units. This meter here kills this meter. And we have 1 over seconds in the numerator right here, and 1 over second squared in the denominator. If we invert and multiply, then uh, invert the 1 over second squared in the denominator, multiply that into the numerator, then there'll be second squared divided by seconds, which is just seconds. And so our, our final units are 1.44 seconds. Happy day. All right, that is the uh, time at which it reaches the final position. But we're actually interested in the maximum height, but never fear, because now that we have the time, we can find anything else that we also need. And since we want a height, that is in the y direction here, so we might want to consider using the y equation All right, well, what's y zero? That's the initial height down here of the ball. Well, it's kicked off of the ground, and the ground level is defined as our, uh, the place where the ball is kicked is our origin of coordinates. So that initial value of y is zero. Plus v naught y. Well, what's that? We already worked it out. It's right. Here. 22 meters per second sine 40 times the time, which is 1.44 seconds. And then we have one more term in this equation, the 1 half ayt squared. So we'll have plus one-half ay we already talked about it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared then we have to multiply by the time squared not time square but time squared or four seconds quantity squared so that will give me the final y well what is the final y the final y is just what we're looking for. It's the maximum height. Because the height is measured in the y direction, that final height will simply be by. So this is what we're looking for. And plugging everything in, 22 sine of 40 times 1.44 seconds times so that gives me 10.2 meters happy day and that's the answer for part a All right, looking um, to part B. Ignoring air, air resistance, same problem, same numbers and everything. We want to now know the time of flight between the kickoff and the landing. So we already worked out that it's 1.44 seconds from the kickoff to the maximum height. 
And you might think that that total time of flight would be twice that amount. In other words, that the 1.44 seconds would be taken between the kickoff and the, and the maximum height, and then it ought to be symmetric if the world is any is is a wonderful place. It ought to take the same amount of time to come back down again. And you would be right that the answer is going to turn out to be twice 1.44, which should be 2.88 seconds. But it's not as satisfying to do it that way as it is the following way. And let me uh, do it from scratch because it's instructive to see how to set this one up from scratch without even having uh, any information about the maximum height because several problems can be uh, done in the following way. So let's just start it from scratch as if we didn't even know that the answer was going to be 2.88 seconds. Let's define this as our initial event, the kickoff. We already have a coordinate system and our final event is when it lands. All right, well, that's pretty interesting because there's something that's immediately apparent about the initial and the final events, and that is that the height is zero for both events. And that suggests using the y equation. All right, what's the final y? That's the final height. Well, that's zero. What's the initial y? Well, that's the initial height, and that's zero too. So it looks like you're not gonna get anything out of this equation, but it looks can be deceiving because v naught y we do know, and we worked that out before, v naught y is this piece of the velocity triangle Twenty two meters per second sine forty degrees. It looks like forty eight there. Times the time, which we don't know. We're looking for that time. We suspect it's going to be two point eight eight plus one half ay again is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time squared. And all that's supposed to equal zero. Well, that looks kind of scary because it looks like we're gonna have to solve a quadratic, but never fear. Knowing the fact that that final time when the football lands will not be zero, we can divide this equation through by t. And that will cancel this t, and it will kill one of these t's. And that leaves, leaves us just with just a linear equation to solve for the time t. We can take this term right here over to the left-hand side, and then we can divide by 9.8 and multiply by 2 in order to find t. So I've taken the, this term over to the left-hand side. I'm going to have to remember to divide by 9.8 and multiply by 2, but the right-hand side is 22 meters per second sine 40. This t already got canceled out, this t right here. And then now we're going to divide by 9.8. and we're gonna multiply by two. Okay, you can do the algebra yourself if you wanna double check it. Let's see what we get now for the time. Just plugging this into my calculator. And lo and behold, we get 2.88, looks like 2.89 uh, 
seconds, which is close enough for our for our purposes. If I had, uh, I think the previous result was 1.442 or three, and when you multiply that by two, you get 2.886 or whatever. Um, anyway, that's double. the time required to reach the maximum height. But that is the time of flight. All right, happy day, that's part B, let's try part C. The range of the projectile. This one actually is gonna be pretty easy because um, that range is this distance right here between the kickoff and the landing. And we already have the time that it takes to go between the kickoff and the landing. So that suggests that I can simply use the X equation. My final X will be out here. My initial X will be out here, which will be zero. And the final X will just be the range. So let's do it. Let's write the X equation We have everything we need. The final x, so let's, let's notate our initial and final things again. Initial and final events. Initial and final. Happy day. Um, are just the kickoff and the landing. So my x at the final time, well, that's just the range. x naught, it's starting off, the football is being kicked from the origin of coordinates, so x naught equals zero. Now we're going to need v naught x for the first time. We need this part of that velocity triangle. But I think you can see that if we're looking for this leg, of that triangle, that that leg is adjacent to the angle theta, and cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, hypotenuse. So v naught x is the v naught, which is 22 meters per second, times cosine of 40 degrees. Happy day, we can plug that in. 22 meters per second, cosine 40 degrees times the time. Well, what's the time? It's the time between the initial and the final events, and that's 2.89 seconds. Plus one half AX. So what's AX? And we've talked about this in some of the other examples. The acceleration of the ball while it's in flight is down and its magnitude is given by 9.8 meters per second squared. And that acceleration is entirely down, meaning that no piece of that acceleration is in the x direction. Therefore, ax is zero. Ay is negative 9.8, but ax is zero. So we just have our old friend zero for this term and it's the simplest thing in the world. Well, we can plug the time in here, but it doesn't matter because it's being multiplied by zero. And so we just plug in uh, to find the maximum range, 20, or the so-called range, 22 let's see, 2.89, multiply that by 22, multiply that by four, Cosine 40. 
And we have 48.6. That's a good distance. That's uh, about half a football field. I mean, a meter is about a yard, roughly. So that's like kicking from the end zone to the 50-yard line. 